Now let us see uh, different concept called electric flux. We represent it by a symbol phi e. What is electric flux? This actually measures the number of electric lines of force passing through a given surface normally. So how can we define in one line? It is defined as number of electric field lines passing through a given surface normally. If I consider there is a plane surface of surface area S is held in uniform electric field <coughs> of strength E right normal unit vector when I draw in it this makes an angle theta with an electric field then electric flux you can count it by E ds cos theta this you can also write it or in general we have taken surface area S so S cos theta this you can also write it as E dot S now you might be thinking surface area is not a vector quantity then how did I put as a dot product electric field vector and surface area vector see if you multiply unit vector to any scalar quantity it becomes a vector if we have 2 multiply by i cap it becomes a vector that you have learned in class 11 so what i did here the normal unit vector drawn on the surface is actually multiplied with the surface area s so it has become a vector quantity you can say where vector s is equal to n cap into s right if ds be the area of a small element here we can choose a small element of area ds then electric flux phi e is equal to e dot ds d phi e is equal to e dot ds to find total flux we have to integrate d phi e and that you have to integrate e dot ds this is a surface integral it is not a normal integration now we can create three cases also here case number one when theta is equal to zero when theta is 0 means angle theta is an angle between normal unit vector and electric field so when theta is 0 it means plane is plane is perpendicular to electric field at this time flux linked with the surface will be maximum that is equal to es case 2 when theta is equal to 90 degree that is plane is parallel parallel to what electric field then electric flux linked with the surface is zero no electric flux is linked case three when theta is equal to 180 degree cos 180 is how much minus one so flux linked with is minus e s this symbolizes here that electric field vector direction is opposite to the surface area vector. 
This is a very important concept. Counting number field density. That how many number of electric lines of force passing normally to the surface. And on the basis of this, there is a very important theorem termed as Gauss's theorem or Gauss's law. What is Gauss's law? It states that it states that surface integral of electrostatic field Gauss's law. It states that surface integral of an electrostatic field is equal to 1 over epsilon naught times to the total charge inside the closed surface. Another statement net electric flux linked with a closed surface net electric flux linked with a closed surface is equal to 1 over epsilon times uh, better to I am writing net electric flux linked with closed surface is equal to 1 over epsilon naught times to the total charge inside the surface. So net magnetic electric flux is phi E dot ds s is equal to q over epsilon naught. So electric flux linked with any closed surface depends on two factors. Number one, how much charge is confined inside the surface. Number two, what is a medium between them. This is a statement of the Gauss's law. It's a very important law and used for finding electric field due to different kind of distribution of charge system. What is special about this law? Number one, this law is applicable only for the closed surfaces. Number two, charge present outside the surface is not counted as a Q in the expression. If we have multiple charges present inside the surface, then we will find the sum of the charges and the biggest thing about this is Gauss's law or electric flux linked with the closed surface is independent of the shape of the surface which you are choosing and this is based on inverse square law because it is hence we can say it is based on Coulomb's law because Coulomb's law is also inverse square law electric field is involved in it and electric field due to a point charge is varies 1 over r square so if somebody says Coulomb's law does not vary inversely proportional to um, r square, then Gauss's law will not be validated. Few things about that. One more important thing we have written here closed surface. What is the closed surface? What is a closed surface? It is the surface area occupied by three dimensional objects. Two dimensional surface area of two dimensional objects will not be taken as a closed surface. I mean to say here surface area of a square, surface area of rectangle, triangle, circle are not validated as they are not as closed surface. Right? I repeat it again. Surface area of two dimensional objects like square, rectangle, triangle and circle are not taken as closed surface. So only three 
dimensional objects are advised to choose as Gaussian surface and Gaussian surface is must to choose. Now if there is a question in the mind apart from three dimensional object even in three dimensional object can I choose a regular surface practically speaking yes Practically speaking, yes, very much. Because it's a very wide law applicable for any closed surface. But at your level in class 12, you are advised to choose known geometrical shaped surfaces. So that solving surface integral become easier for you. Otherwise, it will be uh, difficult. So, let's see the proof of Gauss's law. How to prove Gauss's law? C proof. Consider a point charge Q is kept here and I want to find electric field at this point P. What to do? First we have to choose an appropriate Gaussian surface. Right? In such a way that the point P at which electric field is to be determined must lie on Gaussian surface. Kya karna hai? Pahle ek Gaussian surface choose karo appropriate and I advise you to choose known geometrical shaped figure for in your class. So I am choosing a sphere. Is tarah choose ki jiye ki jis point pe electric field nikarna hai that must lie on Gaussian surface. Distance of point P Choose a small element of surface area ds. Direction of normal unit vector and electric field will be this. So go and solve LHS. Integration E dot ds. S. First solve this dot product. That will be E ds cos 0. Angle between this. So this becomes E ds only. Therefore, equation 1 turns into E dot ds. This you can write it as integration E ds. Right? From here, you can move here. See in this side now. In the left hand side, you have E dot ds e you can take outside what is surface area of sphere e into e is equal to due to point charge you can put the value of e first what is the value of point charge uh, sorry electric field due to point charge 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught q over r square integration of ds as carried forward and surface area in place of this this is total surface area of gaussian surface and gaussian surface in this case is here is sphere so you can put it as 4 pi r square 4 pi 4 pi cancels r square r square cancel what is left this is the proof answer for it. right now most of the applications of the Gauss's law are to find electric field due to a single point charge that you can do in a normal mathematics also or due to a system of point charges something like that let's take first application applications electric field due to uniformly charged infinite
infinitely long infinitely long wire so consider their infinitely long wire carrying positive charge length of the wire is l and linear charge density i define it as lambda you know the definition of linear charge density because of this we have to find electric field at point p so as usual what you have to do we have to first bind choose an appropriate gaussian surface and the most appropriate gaussian surface for this problem as far as known geometrical figures is concerned is cylinder choose a a small segment normal unit vector direction of electric field in this same however on this cross sectional area if you choose normal unit vector electric field are perpendicular so there will be no electric field so you can say at cross sectional area or cross sectional surface e is perpendicular to n cap therefore phi e is equal to 0 right therefore flux is linked with lateral surface now you can work it out is it if it is linked with the lateral surface then go to the lhs int integration e dot ds that you can always write e integration ds always you write at your level no problem because right solve this left hand side e total surface area of the gaussian surface that is cylinder if i assume that distance of point is r then it is 2 pi rl lhs value rhs is total charge q is equal to lambda into l Okay, equating three and four. E two pi R L lambda L over epsilon naught lambda L L cancel. So E is equal to lambda over two pi epsilon naught R. So if you have a look in this result, electric field. due to infinitely long straight wire is varying according to 1 over r square it means if somebody ask you right now plot a graph and show variation of electric field due to linear charge distribution or for infinitely long wire so e is here r is here it is 1 over x graph so you can undoubtedly mark it like this that's how can how you can do for this